Hello friends, today we are going to discuss a topic that is dear to my heart. By the way, welcome to Dr. Mo's health blog. Today we are going to be discussing aging and mental health. How does aging and growing old affect our mental health? Well, you may have noticed if you are over 45 that you forget things easily. Sometimes you search for your keys for about 10-15 minutes while, or your phone while it's right there under your nose. And so you, you, and you, you, you don't remember dates and events and family members get angry with you for not remember, remembering to attend their weddings and all that. That is the beginning of aging of the brain. So the brain is now beginning to age in a creeping manner. We are beginning to lose what is called neuroplasticity. At one extreme you have people like Bruce Willis who at about 65 has a brain of a 90 to 100 year old man. He has aged, his brain has aged so fast he can't even remember his family members, he can't remember events, he can't remember dates. He's helpless and totally dependent on family members. On the other extreme is a person like uh, General Olusegun or Basanjo, who at 90 is performing like a 40 year old uh, person. He still reads, he has written more books than professors. He, he still engages in sports, squash, squash rackets, football, he dances, and generally is performing like a 40 year old. So you can say that biologically his brain is just 40 years or 35. So what is it that makes one's brain to age fast? And why is it that people, some people like Obasanjo can Remain, remain relatively mentally active right into their centenary age. To understand this, we must understand the concept of neuroplasticity. Now, after the first year, the brain grows very little, but remains dynamic. A lot of events are occurring in the brain. As you get new, new experiences, form new habits, learn new skills, the brain develops more connections. These connections are called synapses. So, when you are learning a new skill, your brain develops new connections to preserve the memory of that skill in your brain. And the often, the more often you repeat uh, this um, event, the more you reinforce these new networks, these uh, uh, new pathways that develop in the brain. This is called neuroplasticity. Now, it is highest in the first one year of life where when the, uh, the child learns most of his language and other skills but and remains steady almost to the age of 40. By 40, it begins to de degenerate. And so goes the old saying that you cannot teach an old dog new tricks because the dog's brain and by extension, the human brain has begun to lose its neuroplasticity. Now, why do some people lose neuroplasticity so fast and others are able to retain theirs well into their centenary age? Particularly, as I mentioned, somebody like uh, also a doctor, uh, General Lucia Kundabasencho has been able to achieve that. And it is routine in the blue zones places like Sardinia, Greece, Okinawa, Japan, people are able to remain able to maintain their neuroplasticity into their 80s and 90s. So in this video, we're going to try to teach people how they can maintain neuroplasticity so that they can be independent of their kids and <clears throat> live a long life independent of their kids and society and not become a burden to anybody. Now, <clears throat> what, 
What are the factors that contribute to neuroplasticity? One, diet. Very important. You must eat well. And when I say you must eat well, you must eat uh, food that is rich in protein and fat, monosaturated, mon polyunsaturated fatty acids and monounsaturated fatty acids. The kind that you find in fruits, I mean in seed oils and in fish oil and in seafood. So if you are eating a Mediterranean diet, it helps you to maintain neuroplasticity. Fermented foods also are thought to help to maintain neuroplasticity. Fermented foods like yogurt, cheese, uh, fermented cabbage and all this and all the such products. In Nigeria you'll be talking about things like fermented locust, locust bean. All these things they contain uh, they contain a chemical called spermidine that is believed to improve brain health. They also contain probiotics. Probiotics are friendly bacteria. So that when you eat them, they go and occupy the your gut and chase out the unfriendly bacteria that produce poisons that may your, your body may absorb and it might begin to affect your brain. The next thing we want to talk about is sleep. Uh, it is believed that neuroplasticity and brain growth occurs mostly during sleep. So if you are not getting up to eight hours of sleep daily, uh, that, that's a problem. You might begin to lose your neuroplasticity faster than normal. Now, the next thing is environment. Environment, usually environment, an environment, a rustic environment, with an environment of rustic ambience, well, uh, with plenty of trees, rich fauna and sauna. An exposure to such an environment is usually taught to preserve neuroplasticity. So, but in, contra in contradistinction, if you live in a concrete jungle where there is a lot of pollution and stress, this will tend to affect your neuroplasticity. Now, in urban environments too, you have uh, pollutants in the air like smog, uh, uh, like noise, noise pollution. Okay, these things uh, will help, will cause you to your brains to your brain to generate degenerate faster. Smoking and alcohol will also reduce your neuroplasticity and will cause your brain to age faster. Now, one of the, 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 the major things are industrial chemicals and heavy metals, particularly lead and cadmium that are found in batteries, car batteries. Now, ancient Rome was said to have collapsed mainly because of the high levels of lead in their drinking water because they use lead pipes. And so their, their emperors were getting progressively more insane. We remember somebody like Commodus who killed almost everybody in his household and Nero who burned broom, stood aside and watched it laughing and did nothing. People are beginning to think, scientists are beginning to think that these uh, behaviors that they put on me have been due to psychosis from excessive uh, lead uh, <clears throat> in their drinking water. One of the most effective ways of pre preserving neuroplasticity is exercise. Now, exercise helps because the kind of exercise that I have is the exercise that is associated with movement of the body. And one of such exercises that you can do readily is dancing. When you dance, you use all parts of your body, you use your ears, you use your eyes so that you don't bump into the wall 
going to the next person. You listen to the music, you interpret it, and convert your interpretation into steps, rhythmic steps. So dancing, dancing every day and dancing vigorously for 30 minutes every day throughout your life is thought to improve uh, <coughs> neuroplasticity. Now, exercise is so important that we will do a video on exercise because apart from dancing, there are three or four areas of the body which, when exercised daily, will help to preserve neuroplasticity. These are the hand, the tongue, the face, and the neck. If you do exercise these parts regularly, you are likely to preserve neuroplasticity. Fasting also helps. Fasting helps because glucose and high carbohydrate diets are thought to be harmful to the brain. The brain prefers high protein and high diet high in polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats which are found in fish oil and seed oils. So if you are consuming apple, heavy apple and little soup, no fish and all that, you are likely to have suffer neurodegeneration earlier than somebody who eats seed oils, okay, like olive oil and um, <clears throat> and eats a lot of fish and other seafood. Traveling. You know, when you travel and you expose yourself to different environments, it helps your brain to, to, to develop newer networks to preserve the me memory of the places that you have visited. So if you, if, if you, do, if you are not a person that likes to travel, uh, it doesn't help you to maintain your neuroplasticity. Another thing that helps is intellectual pursuits. Like, like we said, somebody like Obasanjo, rather than bemoaning his loss from power, went to school and got a degree in theology at his 70s. That may be explained one of the reasons why he has, is still active and maintaining, uh, maintaining sound brain health, like that of a 40 or a 30 year old. The man still delivers lectures. He travels, he's strong. So that may be one of the reasons. And he also plays games, table tennis, lawn tennis. And it is believed that particularly racket ball, any uh, sports that involves using a racket helps to improve grip strength and may actually uh, promote neuroplasticity. Indoor games, Sudoku, crossword puzzles, and Scrabble, this will help to, to maintain neuroplasticity and brain health well, well into your 90s. One thing that is overlooked is religiosity and meditation. People who meditate deeply, who uh, go to church every Sunday and congregate and pray and meditate, seem to live longer than people who, who do not. It doesn't matter what religion. Well, you could be a Muslim, you could be a Christian, you could be a Hinduist, whatever religion. But that act of a meeting with your people, congregating, will help to preserve your life. Maintaining 